So a few weeks ago, I posted a short where I was reviewing an NZXT pre-built PC called the Player 2 Prime. And this short actually sparked up a discussion across multiple social medias about whether it was more cost effective to actually build your own PC or to just go ahead and buy a pre-built like the one I was showing. So since it all started with the Player 2 Prime, I thought it was only fair that we do a full breakdown and review of the PC. Not only am I gonna give you guys gameplay, specs, and aesthetics, all that stuff like we normally would, but I'm actually gonna break this PC down piece by piece and really see how much each piece costs, add it all up and see if it's more cost effective or not. And to keep everything fair, I do want to mention that even though NZXT did ship me out this PC for a previous video, they have absolutely no idea that I'm making this full review and breakdown. So depending on what happens today and what results we may find, this could go downhill very quickly for the relationship between me and NZXT. With all that said, let's go ahead and get into the review. Let's take a look at this PC build. So starting off with the CPU, we have a very capable AMD Ryzen 7 7700X, which is resting underneath the NZXT Kraken Elite 240 AIO. And this CPU cooler features LEDs, water cooling, and even an LCD screen that can display important metrics like CPU temperature. Sitting next to it, you'll see 32 gigabytes of T-Force Vulkan DDR5 RAM. The nice part is, since NZXT provides us with higher capacity sticks, we not only get 32 gigabytes, but we're left with two additional RAM slots in case we ever want to add more later. Now, right beneath that, NZXT provides us with a WD Blue one terabyte NVMe SSD, which will be plenty for the operating system and a couple of games. Now, on to everyone's favorite part of the build, the graphics card. Now, NZXT gives us a RTX 4070 Ti, which is going to give us top tier gaming performance at moderate to high frame rates and resolution. As you can see, this graphics card is absolutely massive, taking up a majority of the space in the lower half of our build. It also features a triple fan configuration underneath for maximum cooling. And when we turn our PC around, you will notice the MSI A750 GL PSU, which provides our components with 750 50 watts of power and a modular build so that we can use the cables we need and ditch the ones that we don't, ultimately leading to less cable management. All of these components are configured inside of an NZXT H7 Flow midsize PC case. And I love this case in particular because it gives you the fish tank aesthetic on the front and side panels. At the same time, it's not sacrificing the optimal airflow, which typically does come from the front of the case. And as you can see, we have our glass panel on the front as well as a 45 degree air intake, allowing cool air to blow across all of our important components. From there, the air is then expelled through the top of the AIO fan. In an ideal world between aesthetics and functionality, this case is a perfect middle ground. All right, now it's time to boot up our PC for the first time so we can move along to the setup portion. And if you don't care about the setup portion, that's totally fine. Just skip ahead to this timestamp right here and you can get to the cost breakdown. Starting out, because this is a pre-build, it's going to boot straight into Windows, which is really nice and convenient, especially if you're a beginner to PC. You'll start out by selecting which country you reside in and then which keyboard layout you want to use. And of course, connecting to the network. After that, sit back and relax because your PC is going to start checking for different updates automatically. And this process should only take a few minutes and then your PC is gonna go ahead and restart itself so it can apply the updates. After that, you'll need to scroll through a license agreement document and then just hit accept. Go ahead and type in a unique name for your PC, click next and then sit back once again while your PC restarts one more time. At this point, you can go ahead and enter your Microsoft account so your PC can download any previous apps like Outlook, Teams, or Xbox Game Pass. If you entered a Microsoft account from a previous PC, PC, then your computer will give you the option to restore from your old computer, which is going to save you a lot of time during setup for your new one. Go ahead and create a four digit pin for logging in and then hit OK. It's going to prompt you to select some customization options, but you can just feel free to skip through all this. And just like before, your PC will once again check for updates. And now your PC is going to reboot yet again to apply all the Windows specific settings. And finally, just like that, you're at the Windows home screen. Now on this particular PC, the Gigabyte Control Center is going to pop up. Go ahead and accept the license license agreements, then you'll be able to customize different settings like fan controls and RGBs. Now we're not quite done yet because we're going to need to update all of our PC drivers. And for me, the easiest way to do this is by downloading a software called Driver Easy. You're going to have to pay a subscription for this, but it is honestly worth every penny. So with this software, as you can see, all you have to do is press the green button that says scan now. The software is going to go ahead and go through the PC and find any out of date drivers. And even though this is a brand new build, as you can see out of the box, we have 14 updates to do. And the reason I like this app so much is because I can hit that green button in the bottom corner that says update all. From this point, all I have to do is sit back and wait for the software to do all the heavy lifting. Just a tip of advice for you, if this is your first time doing this, you are going to have to restart the PC a few times after important updates like your graphics card, and then you're going to have to just keep hitting scan again until all the updates are finally cleared. And once you're complete, you can go ahead and download Steam, Battle.net, or Epic Launcher and start gaming. Alright, so now that we've dissected our PC and we figured out every 
every single component inside of this thing. I'm gonna go through piece by piece real quickly and kind of break down how much each item would cost if it weren't in a pre-built configuration, but if you were just to buy everything separate online. So starting off with the case, this case is called the H7 Flow. This is an NZXT case, and this case costs $129.99. Next up, we have our Kraken Elite AIO. This is the Kraken Elite 240 RGB. This is $259.99. After that, we'll go on to the motherboard. Now, this is not an NZXT product. This is actually made by Gigabyte. It's the B650 UD AC ATX AM5 motherboard. I know, it's a mouthful, but it costs $165. We have more NZXT parts, and that is going to be our fans. The three front fans right here are actually called the F140 RGB core, uh, and these cost $21.99 each. Up next, we have our power supply. Our PSU is actually an MSI product, and on Amazon, I found this for $93.99. Up next for the storage, we have our WD Blue one terabyte NVMe SSD. You can buy this directly from Western Digital for $79.99. Up next for RAM, we have our T-Force Vulcan 32 gigabytes. Now these are higher capacity sticks at 16 gigabytes each. You can get the set for $87.99 on Newegg. As for our CPU, we have the AMD Ryzen 7 7700X. Again, you can shop this on Newegg for $314. And then we have our graphics card. This is the Gigabyte RTX 4070 Ti. I found this on Amazon for $819.99. All right, and as you can see, the product total ended up being around $2,016.90, but assuming that you're gonna wanna use your own thermal paste, we'll add $15 to that calculation because that's kind of what a tube would cost. And that comes out to $2,031.90. But don't also forget that this computer comes pre-installed with Windows 11. So we add $139 to the mix and the total now becomes $2,170.90. One thing to keep in mind is that pricing for PC parts fluctuates up and down all the time. So this is just when I'm looking in particular. When you're watching this video, they could be higher or lower just depending on the market. But as you guys can see, it's a pretty even one for one exchange for how much you're paying for the pre-build to how much the parts are actually valued at at this current state. And this really leads us to the ultimate question. Is it cheaper to buy a pre-built gaming PC or to source the parts and build one yourself? To me, it's a no brainer. It seems like pre-built PCs give all the value right now, especially considering the fact that you get a two year warranty. You don't have to hassle with the build and you're gonna get Windows pre-installed for you. If it were me and I just bought this pre-built PC right now, here's a couple of upgrades that I would do right away to make this my own. When we take a look at our brand new PC from the front, the first thing that stands out is that massive graphics card. The 4070 Ti is a beast for gaming, but you can see the weight of it gives it a lot of sag and it makes me a little bit uncomfortable to leave it that way. So I just went on Amazon, picked up a very inexpensive GPU riser. This one's nice because it's magnetic, but basically you just twist it open and prop it underneath the front corner of your GPU and you have a really nice stable base. So there's actually a second problem that a GPU this large creates and that is airflow restriction. Now, because this is a mid-size case, there's really a big block happening right in the middle from the GPU body itself. And my fear is that hot air is going to get underneath the GPU and it's going to keep recycling itself through my most important component. So to solve this, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some case fans and we're gonna put them underneath. Now, I would recommend that we get matching NZXT case fans just for the software purposes alone alone, but secondary aesthetics. All I have is this Corsair set right here. So I'm just gonna use this as an example. But as you can see, if we put the airflow pulling in, now we're gonna have cool air that's fed through our graphics card and all the way expelled through the top. That's gonna be really nice. And we don't wanna have this much air intake and not enough outtake. So what I'm gonna do is actually add a third fan on the back of the case here as well. This way the hot air can pull out of the back and the top of the case. And finally, because this is already a high-end PC build, I'm I'm not a big fan of having one terabyte of storage. So what I would do is go ahead and pop out that NVMe and I would just upgrade it to a minimum of a two terabyte NVMe drive. And that way we're gonna have double the storage. All right guys, that is gonna wrap up today's video. And if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Until I see you guys on next week's video, go ahead and check out one of these two videos next.